All right, my name is Omar Masai, and I want to encourage everyone who would like to know more about this event taking place at the Episcopal Actors Guild, this event called Black Voices, to watch this video and uh, get your tickets before November 19th, 7 p.m. I fell in love with the theater because, I mean, in my uh, youth, uh, as a young man, I had, uh, gosh, I can remember at the age of, you know, when I was in grammar school, having a little, a little uh, stage that was made out of cardboard and had little cardboard characters that had magnets on the bottom. And you would take a, a, a stick and you would move this magnet around and you would talk as the characters moved. And I was doing this, I don't know how old I was, 11, maybe 10, you know? Uh, I remember on my, being late for school because my mother was yelling at me to get out of my room and go to school because I was playing with, this, with these little stage characters in the morning and, and it just became something that I got really involved. Actually, it was much earlier than that. At the age of seven, I wrote my first play and I took it to my teacher and she was so impressed with it and she actually set me in a corner with a little typewriter and gave me one of the other students to read the, the, the play to me as I tried to uh, type it. So I've always had this real love for the theater uh, and it's just been something that I've always, um, I've always been a part of. The acting thing probably became an obsession for me when I graduated from high school. I was in a, I was the lead in my high school play and going out on stage and hearing the applause of the audience and getting that feedback and, and standing out in a way that I had never stood out before at that school really became an obsession for me. And I moved after high school, I moved up to San Francisco and my first job was carrying props for the actors workshop. To me, what really makes the theater unique, of course, is the relationship between the actor and the audience, which is something that you don't get in cinema. Uh, you don't get uh, in radio. Uh, you don't get in any other form where you're not actually in front of the audience and they're responding to you. So that was always, that was a big uh, seductive aspect of what, what, what drew me into the theater, even even when I even when I realized that you can make a lot more money as a as a film actor uh, that you than you could as a theater actor. I also write plays, and the reason I'm uh, involved with the Episcopal a Actors Guild is because I wrote a play, a one act play in the same vehicle that I am now producing. Uh, I, I wrote a play it was several years ago and it was very well received and I developed a relationship with the Guild at that time that has evolved into being where I am now the producer of the, the uh, what we call, uh, in, the, in the spring I produced a, a series of one acts called Small Plates and we decided in the fall that I would uh, take an ethnic kind of bend towards that and produce this series called Black Voices. The Guild, the Episcopal Actors Guild is a wonderful charity organization that uh, raises money to uh, help struggling actors and people in the theater, uh, theater members uh, of various uh, you know, qualifications and uh, uh, helps them to survive. And it has been a tradition for quite a while I don't know the exact dates that it got started. I know there are a lot of, a lot of uh, stories that travel around this group of very progressive people that are in this building on 29th and Broadway uh, that have an incredible history 
of uh, serving actors and providing services for them. It was actually suggested to me after I produced uh, the small plates was something that took place every year, twice a year. It took place in the spring and it took place in the fall. And it uh, involved uh, readings from uh, short one act plays uh, from various people uh, who were involved with the guild. And I decided this year that I, I wanted to actually reach out and do something that was specifically uh, involving uh, black actors and black writers, because I think a lot of times they don't necessarily get the same kind of recognition uh, that other, act other writers do. And uh, I decided that I wanted to do the, do the small plates which is open to everybody in the spring. And I wanted to try doing the uh, fall presentation of 1X and directed specifically towards the African-American community. What do, I, what do I want the audience to get out of this? I would like the audience to have the same experience that I had when I read the plays, which is the feeling that this was a unique look at a different group of uh, African-Americans and some of their struggles, some of their dramas, uh, and just a, a very creative way that they chose to express themselves. And I felt that this was not only, well, not necessarily unique uh, in, in, you know, in, in an ethnic sense, but they were unique in that they were, that the plays were well written and that the, uh, the, the experience was a universal uh, experience that people, no matter what your, your ethnicity, was could appreciate and relate to. I, th I think one wonderful thing about, and, and of course the thing that really stands out about a play like Hamilton and why that is the, the exception rather than the rule is because people, uh, ho Hollywood, uh, New York, uh, whatever group you're referring to, uh, a lot of people get bogged down in traditional ideas about casting. And it's, uh, it's always unique when you get uh, a play that comes along or a group of plays or a, a producer or whatever that comes along. Joe Papp was a great example of that, of people, producers who broke the mold and who produced plays that uh, were not restricted by old ideas of race or of casting and allowed you to experience uh, a very unique play on an entirely different level. And I think that that's, that's what people are really excited about uh, with Hamilton. One of the things, I mean, it's also a very well-written play and, and very well produced, but it's also the, uh, the creative casting that really uh, sets it apart from most, most other plays. And I think it's something that we want to encourage because uh, old ideas need to need to grow and they need to change. And I think it's, it's one, it's a very healthy sign for the theater. How does theater change uh, or how does it need to change? Uh, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's being forced to change because of circumstances right now surrounding this pandemic, which it never had, never was an issue before. I don't know what, I don't know that the impact of say the flu virus that took place in the 1920s or something like that, had any impact on the theater uh, compared to what has happened today. Uh, and I, I, maybe that's something worth uh, researching, but I think that it, it's, uh, it's certainly a, a forced people to have to make creative decisions in order to survive. And I think that's a healthy thing. Well, I think people must watch this uh, event uh, this Black Voices event because it's a unique event. It's, uh, it's got uh, some real talented playwrights and some very unique plays that uh, deserve to be uh, experienced. And uh, it's certainly uh, a unique opportunity to get involved with an organization that is extremely unique uh, as its regard for uh, the health and well-being of actors in New York, 
Uh, it's, it's really been a lifeline, I think, for many actors. And uh, there are even uh, a lot of historical precedences for the way this theater has evolved. It was part of the Underground Railroad, which people may not know this particular church that it's located in was part of the Underground Railroad. And there are great stories about how African Americans found refuge in a place uh, with a lot of very progressive thinking people that uh, was unique at the time, especially when they had things like the, uh, the, uh, the race riots of the 18, uh, 1860s, I think it was, 1863, if I'm correct. Uh, and during that time, uh, the South was so powerful because of the slave, the money that emanated from the slave trade, that there were very few places in Manhattan that actually were that progressive and actually uh, uh, offered refuge for Black Americans. And so it's really got a great history of that. And it's something that I like to be associated with and, and, and it certainly is a, a, a response or something that is exhibited by the people who are involved with the organization today. It's important for the community to support the Guild because uh, actors uh, are tra traditionally they're unemployed most of the time. And it's, it's, some, it's some place that Actors, writers, playwrights, all, all theater, uh, different levels of theater people can find refuge in and can find support that's not available other places. They're, they're, uh, they're not necessarily able to uh, make a living uh, as easily uh, in other areas uh, unless, they, unless they're willing to give up their craft. And, 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 and there are a few places that really support theater people and their craft. And it's uh, a really a unique opportunity to support uh, those events and those people. Well, I would just like to say how uh, proud I am and how uh, much gratitude I have that I was able to stumble across this organization because I find this group to be comprised of a stellar um, uh, level of people uh, extremely progressive, uh, extremely helpful and compassionate and who want to make sure that uh, actors are able to survive in circumstances where they might not otherwise uh, be able to. And I, I think that in, in that in that regard alone, it's important. It's a very important place for us to give our support and uh, to try to make sure that places like that continue. I'm Omar, and I want to encourage everyone to uh, check out the EpiscopalActorsGuild.com website and sign up for this event and any other events because they have many different events taking place uh, at, throughout the year. And uh, it's important uh, that everyone uh, try to support this and give as much uh, attention to it as they can because it, it is a wonderful opportunity and uh, something that's very well needed by, especially now in these times when it's very difficult because there are no theaters. Theaters are closed now. There is, Broadway has shut down and this pandemic has created a real need for other avenues to generate revenue for uh, our surviving artists.